The Wise Channel celebrates African Americans who did amazing things. You may be wondering, why do we even celebrate Black History Month? Well, one reason is because we shouldn't just learn the history of people who look like us. If that was the case, classrooms with all African American students would be like this. And now, Deshaun will list all the presidents of the United States. <clears throat> Barack Obama. Good job, Deshaun. How silly would that be? But what about this? This month in class, we will read books by Ronald Dahl and Dr. Seuss. We'll learn about three great American inventors, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Edison, and Henry Ford. And in social studies, we'll research European explorers. And remember to get your costumes ready for Colonial Day, where we'll pretend we're living in the 1800s before the Civil War. Seriously? The truth is, those authors, inventors, and explorers did amazing things. But just learning about them does not tell the whole story. Whether or not our own classroom is diverse, we should all celebrate our diverse American history. I celebrate African American history because it's my history. But guess what? It's your history too. That's because black history is American history. And as Americans, it belongs to all of us. Hispanic American history is our history. Native American history, Asian American history, Indian American history, and yes, Caucasian American history are all our history. In 1926, a scholar named Carter G. Woodson noticed Americans were not learning much about African American history. So he started what went on to become Black History Month. And now, nearly 100 years later, every February, we continue the tradition of highlighting African Americans who did amazing things. Because Black history is American history. Let's talk. Why is it important to learn about different types of people who made history? Carter G. Woodson started Black History Month around 100 years ago. What would you like to start today that could last for 100 years? Did you know we have a playlist where you can see all our Black History videos? You should check it out. Have you subscribed to the Wise Channel yet? If not, do it right now and make sure you hit that little bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 11 o'clock worship service. We're glad to see everybody here. The announcements are in your bulletin. Uh, some will be coming in the screen in front of you. Are there any that need highlighting further? Correcting, amending. Luke, yes. Uh, we do have Supper Club coming up this Saturday. Uh, Carl and I will be sponsoring it, or hosting it, rather. And uh, we're going to have full court. So I told the choir, I started to put BYOB <clears throat> of your, of your barbecue sauce. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a special barbecue sauce that, that you enjoy, please feel free to bring it in and share with others. And we look forward to having y'all. We will have a Mighty Raw thing this year. And uh, Ash Wednesday services noon and at 5.30, right? Correct. Any others that need hollering further? Coming in? Please respond as appropriate and call to worship. Come, rejoice, and sing. God's love is showered over you this day. God shows compassion to all who are weak and downtrodden. Jesus Christ offers healing mercies to our troubled souls. Praise be to God who has called us here. And thanks be to God for God's eternal love. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able for our opening hymn, number 469, Jesus is all the world to me, numbers 469.
be seated. There's a misprint in the bulletin. Our Psalter reading this morning is number 859. That's based in Psalm 147, number 859. You notice it goes over to the next page also, and we will send the response. So Beth is going to play through the response, and then we'll join in. Understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden, but casts the wicked to the ground. takes no delight in the might of a horse, nor pleasure in the strength of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in the faithful, in those who hope in the Lord's steadfast love. Makes peace in your borders, fills you with fi the finest wheat. The Lord sends forth commands to the earth, the word runs swiftly. The Lord gives snow like wool, scatters hoarfrost like ashes. Cast forth ice like morsels, who can withstand its cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them, makes the wind blow and the waters flow. The Lord declares the word to Jacob the statutes and ordinances to Israel. The Lord has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know God's ordinances. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You have loved and shielded your people through all joys and trials of life. We come to you this day rejoicing in the many blessings you have given to us. We open our hearts again to hear your word for us and to gather strength and joy for service in your world. Be with us. Bless us again, we pray. Please stand as you're able as we sing our second hymn, O For a Thousand Tongues to Sing, number 57, O For a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
page number 881. This is the traditional version of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. It's on the screen in front of you and in your hymnal. Please join me in this historic declaration of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended in heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Michelle, I, I usually editorialize on this every time we get to a th oh, 4,000 times to sing. But uh, that verse 4, he breaks the power of canceled sin, he sets the prisoner free. That's the gospel. And we need to hear it in here, and it certainly needs to be heard out. Our lesson from the Hebrew Scriptures this morning is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. This is Isaiah chapter 40. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Who stretches out the stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in? Who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing? Scarcely are they planned, scar planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stone. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out the ho their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will be faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Good morning. Isn't our God good and merciful and wonderful to us all? And He is has done so many wonderful things in our lives. And I just want to go first by sharing how the Lord has really been blessing me and put me on a path to help me uh, get my uh, body has just not been filling up to it's the best help it could be in. And the Lord has just put me on a journey of helping me and showing me what I need to do to keep myself healthy and feeling better than I have been. And I have been feeling kind of raunchy in my body. I mean, the walking and all that type of stuff has just not been good. But I've been on the path with the Lord, and I have really seen how he has helped me and given me good guidance and wisdom, how to uh, uh, feel a whole lot better. And I am feeling a whole lot better, and I'm just so thankful for it. This year, 24, we'll tell you more and more about it. But as the beginning, he has put a whole bunch of great things in our life just a whole bunch of great things that are going to happen in, in 24 for our family and I'll be sharing as I go along and so I'm very excited about all that he showed me in the beginning. So I'm sure that God has been blessing all of you and been gracious and wonderful to you. So if you have a God sighting, you can share it at this time. 
Yes, Ms. Jane. Thank you. Yes, I just want y'all to all look up and see that, that our, our ceiling has been fixed and what a blessing that is. And also just to let you know, we are working on other things and just uh, so grateful to all those that help do uh, various things around here. So that is a blessing. Yes, anybody else? Ms. Bibby, turn around. We, we just had a, 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 a blessing this morning with the, the church breakfast this morning. It's a good turnout and, and good fellowship. It was, it was a blessing. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah. I know it's been a while It normally wouldn't be a God sighting. And I know, I saw that one of y'all, one of your sons, y'all, y'all sons is engaged. Is that yeah. Aww. Well, I know of a young couple that split up this week. Or, or finally split up is the right way to phrase it. The split up has been overdue for a long time. And for whatever reason, it came this week. And I think both of them will be better off separate than they were together. So. Anybody else? Well, we'll go before you the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you as we come before you realizing how merciful and how good and faithful you are to us all. Thank you, Father, for all the many ways that you have been a blessing to each and every person that is here, Father. We thank you for it and we do not take it lightly. And We know that you're powerful and that you're mighty. And Lord, we thank you, God, for all the ways that you have led individuals to choose what path is best for them. And as they have chosen the journey to go their separate ways, Father, we thank you, God, that you are there with them, leading and guiding them and blessing them to a bright and wonderful future. Thank you, Father, for all the many hands of help that is about this church, taking care of all the needs and the repairs of the church. We praise you and thank you for their obedience and their goodness. And Lord, we thank you as we pray for everybody everywhere who suffer for any type of illness or the sickness, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we are counting on you for your faithfulness and your goodness to help us to journey through this earth, Father, in good and perfect health and, Father, in deliverance from all that ails us. We thank you, Father, that for all the many praise reports that we have received on, on those behalf of those people and we just bless you and magnify you father for you are so good and faithful to us all and we thank you father for giving us a heart to trust and believe in your goodness in jesus name we pray amen <laughs> morning is Mark chapter 1 verses 29 through 39. Jesus heals many at Simon's house and goes on a preaching tour in Galilee. Please stand for this reading of the gospel. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was all still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of God, read for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your innumerable blessings. Father, please accept these tithes, offerings, and alms as we give them back to you for service in your kingdom. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen.
He is a really good God. I'm so glad that he never leaves us, never forsakes us, but is always there, made available to us, and always with his hand out reaching to us, drawing us back to him. Amen. In the gospel reading that we read, er that Luke read earlier, it showed what Jesus was ministering, laying hands on, on the sick and recovering, healing, and driving out demons. And the scripture says for us to follow God, to be imitators of God as dear children. So these, these things should be happening in our lives also. Right before Jesus ascended, he, he said this. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs should accompany those who believe. They will pick up, I mean, they will believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes and with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will be, they will get well. See, the God has strengthened us with power. When we was born again, that power of God made itself available to us as agents and ambassador of the most high God. Amen. We are his representative here on this earth. Amen. And so he expects us to walk like he walked. Yeah. Jesus said, the things I do, you shall do, and even greater things. And, I, and you know, when I read that, I'm just like, Jesus, I can't even do this. I'm, if I could do just a fraction of what you could do, I'd just be glad at that. But you're talking about greater things? So I'm, not, I'm just striving to do what he tells me to do. Amen. And he will take care of the rest. So he has instructed us to do these things. But there's a part of the script, those scripture we read that it, to me is the key to this thing happening. It says Jesus got, I'm going to read, let me read the scripture for it so I can say it's what it first. It said very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went off to a solitary place where he prayed. He got away from all the hustle and bustle. He got away from the crowd. He got away from the things, the things that happened in our life. And he isolated himself so he could spend time with the Father. Amen. That time of solitude with the Father is so vital in our lives. We got to carve out time one on one. This is great here. But it's the individual time where he talks to wrong. Amen. See, wrong away from my wife, and I love my wife. <laughs> but I have to spend time with the Creator so I can even be a good husband to her. Amen. So He wants us to do so. That is the key of this whole thing. So it says, spending time communicating with Him, you only, it said, you, let me slow down. You only get to know someone by spending time with them. You can read books about someone or watch them from afar and gain a degree of knowledge about who they are. You can imitate their ways and get some similar results, but spending time alone is the only way to develop intimacy or closeness with that individual. You discover their personalities and their motivation. It is the only way you can find the answer to the question why? God knows us. His desire is for us to know him. This can only be accomplished by spending time with him. You can't, you can't do it. I'm going to tell you just a, a thing. My, next week on Sunday, me and that lovely lady right here, we've been, we've been married for 35 years. Aww. Now, when we, we met on the, 
we met on a blind date. She lived in Birmingham, I live here in Mobile. And so we met on a blind date, so we didn't live in the same city, so we had to communicate with each other mm -hmm. on the phone, and that communication got me to know her apart from all the, the we're going out all day, we're going to eat, we're doing all that. No, it's just one-on-one -on -one communication, and I began to know her. And as we have a, a, a grown together, we have changed, but we know, I know what motivates her, I know her heart. That's what God wants. We can only find that out by spending time with him. Have you ever looked at things and said, God, why did you do that? I don't understand your motivation behind why you was doing that. Let me tell you, he will tell you exactly. You'll find out the, the Father's heart. The Father's heart. That's what he wants. That's why he wants to isolate you. He wants you to take you one-on-one -on -one and deal with you individually so that collectively as the body of Christ, we can come together and make an impact in this world. Amen. See, we got to be tanked up. Now, that's how I did my turn. Tanked up with the Holy Spirit. So that when we gather in a place like this, we are believers coming from all different places, all different backgrounds, but we are gathered here for one reason, to praise and honor and glorify the Almighty God. Yes. And when that happens, okay, the scripture says where two or three are gathered in my name, he's in the midst. Yes. So I don't have to be concerned. I know I came together in his name. I know Pastor came together in his name. Justin came together in his name. So he is in the midst of this place right now. Amen. And he is yes. here to cause a change. Yes. Amen. yes. There's no reason anybody could come here. Gathering in the name of Jesus and leave here unchanged. Unless you made a great effort to reject what he was offering. Jesus said, let them that have ears hear. Amen. All the crowd he was speaking to heard him physically, but he wanted them to hear from in here. Communion refers to God's communication and presentation of himself to us, together with our proper response to him with joy. We say with joy because it would not be communion if God revealed himself in total wrath and we were simply terrified. That would be a true revelation and a proper response, but it would not be communion. God comes to us in love. And we don't get to some of these things. Communion assumes that God comes to us in love and that we respond joyfully to the beauty of his perfection. An offer of his fellowship. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever just sat sometime and wonder that if you look around, you can look around at nature and you say, God created all this. God set all this in motion. God created man. He breathed life in man. He is the creator of everything that we see. And then you can search him, but he still wants to talk. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he's concerned about, what's, about what, who you are and what's going on in your life. I can't even count the, the hairs on my finger, but he knows the hairs on me. Knew that I lost some, probably just while I'm standing here. <laughs> but he is concerned with us. So I'm going to go talk about a few, and I won't be here long. I want to talk about some of the benefits of spending time alone with the Almighty God. One is exposure to God's wisdom. Yes. God is all wise and all knowing. You can't spend time alone with him and remain in Acts 4.13 says that when the religious leaders saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were uneducated and untrained trained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. 
You can't spend time with the Lord and not be wiser than you are now. John 1 5 states, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask the God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Amen. Have you ever wondered, it says, you know, what eyes, I, I put it this way, what eyes are you looking at the world through? Are you looking through it through your natural eyes? Are you looking through it through the spiritual? See, God wants us to see the world through his vantage point. See, when you see the world through his vantage point, then you can learn how to walk in love. See, the scripture says while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. It wasn't because we was lucky. But his love motivated him to go to action. And we should be the same people that when people see us as believers, see, there's some responsibility come with giving your life to God. And when you do, people are watching you. No, they just not just listening to what you say. They are watching your actions. Because our action should be Christ-like. We know we went through the thing where it said the big thing was, what would Jesus do? The answer as a believer is, just what you saw me do. Because I'm supposed to be an imitator of Christ. And Paul told him, said, follow me. See, we, were like, we like to follow man. But he said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I'm not following Christ, you don't need to follow me because the way, there's a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it means destruction. Yeah. So if you follow me and I'm erring, I'm, I'm not even following what the scripture said, do not ever follow me. <laughs> because we all screw up and get wavered. And if you see me getting wavered, just come to me and guide me right back on. Because that's what we are, brothers and sisters of Christ. We are all part of the family. Amen. If you suffer, I suffer. If you rejoice, I rejoice with you. Amen. We are family. Amen. Renewal of physical and spiritual strength. We read, Luke read earlier, the scriptures in Isaiah 40, where it says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm trying to tell you, it's been some times I've just been told to just physically, mentally crashed. And I get away. Focus on God. And it's amazing how a little sleep refreshes you when God has anointed Amen. Because God is concerned about you. Beneficiary of godly guidance. God promised to guide us through all the things of life. And you know the thing about it is, nobody wants to go but down a path of destruction. Nobody does. If there's somebody's telling you the bridge is out, don't go there. Bridges out. Nobody wants to go there. And a lot of times, you know, God corrects us and disciplines us. We don't like that. You know, we normally don't like that. But it's necessary. And he's doing it in love. So when you spend the time with you, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't hardly, I, I, it's here, anytime I spend time with God individually, he's going to correct me about something that I'm doing because he wants me the best. He wants me to renew my mind so I can prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. He is changing me. He is molding me. He is the potter and I am in his hand and he is changing me. He is changing you. All you got to do is let him do it. Amen. Just let him do it. <laughs> And you know the thing about it in Timothy, it says this, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, says, All scripture is God-breathed 
and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped with every good word. Without that rebuking, without that correction, we will never get equipped. We might get for, equipped for some work, but we won't be equipped for every good work. And you also, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to conclude in a second. One of the things you get when you spend time with God, the scripture tells you don't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. When you spend time with God, he will reveal to you the spirit of God that was sent. He came to lead and guide us to the truth. So all we have to do is ask him. I'm trying to tell you, I ask, I ask Spirit God the stuff that leaves me. I'll be over here and lost my keys over here, and I'll be walking around. I'd, say, I'd, I'd get to a point, and I'd just say, Holy Spirit, you know where I put them. Show me where it is. Right there. <laughs> Somewhere that I didn't suppose. I'm exhausted everything that I want to do. But you know what it is? I spent time wasting when I could have asked him from the beginning. See, I was trying to do everything I had to do. I put my plan in action. And then, after I exhausted my plan, I just all of a sudden said, well, I need God's help. Now, I need God. God would have helped me from the beginning if I would just ask him again and say, Holy oh, Spirit, where are my keys at? Okay, you hung them up over there. You know, you don't normally put them there, but they right down there in that shelf over there. You normally hang them there, but you put them on the shelf. I saw you when you did it. We're supposed to go to God first. And he sets the plan in action. He just asks for us to be obedient. So I'm going to conclude with this. Don't be too busy to spend time alone with God. Proprietize spending time alone with God daily and even spending more time with him regularly. This discipline will help you live a Christ-honoring, God-glorified, and fulfilled life. If God's word says you are forgiven, then you are forgiven. If God's word says your needs are met, then your needs are met. If God's word says you are healed, you are healed. If you don't let go of God's word but keep it in your heart and mind, you can't lose. There's no force the devil can bring against you that can overthrow the word of God. God's word will make you the victor every single time. So if you have been wanting good success and it has been eluded you, Quit wondering if you have what it takes to succeed and remember instead who lives on the inside of you. Then turn the word, turn to the word and put God's success formula to work in your life. Start talking it, start thinking it, and start doing it. Faith without works is dead. Actions is required. For our, as a part of our belief system. You can believe all day long that the Bible is true, and that's to your credit, but what the Bible says will never affect your life in a personal way until you start acting on God's word. Do not worry or fret that God has given more faith to others than he has to you. Rest assured in the fact that God has imparted enough faith to you to make sure you are covered from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Faith counts the things done before anything has happened. Remember, no promise of God can fail to be fulfilled. Yeah. He's a God who watches over his word to perform. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Our soul needs renewed, doesn't it? And uh, what a blessing it was today for me to be able to have mine renewed. Amen. So thank you, and God bless you. At this time, we're going to come together, and we are going to, um, there's a communion liturgy. If you don't have one, just raise your hand. There should be some in the back. Um, so we're not, uh, you, uh, you know, we're not weekly doing page 12, and there's a reason for that. I found this book that actually uses the scriptures uh, to, it, and it's kind of melted into the communion. And so today, this kind of helps bring those scriptures 
alive as we do it as part of our communion. So um, please join me. minutes as we first come together and we appreciate our United Methodist Church that has the, an invitation open to all. Even if you're not baptized, come to the table. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing about our faith because when you come to the table, you are going to receive something. Amen. And remember, this is God's blessing to you. It is a gift to you. That is what communion is, a gift to you. But as we get to the confession part, I want to take a few minutes afterwards, and I want us to really ponder more than just these words and think about our week and where what, we, what we've done and what we failed to do in the last week. So please join me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. To God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Ever living God. We have known and we have heard that you are the creator of the ends of the earth and your understanding is unsearchable. You give power to the faint and strength to the powerless. When your people grew weary, you lifted them up in Christ with wings like eagles. And when your church falls exhausted, you send your Holy Spirit so that we may walk and run in your strength and not our own. By the depth of your mercy, you turn the agony of your son's cross into the grace of his resurrection. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels and archangels and all the company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are Lord of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Everlasting God, in Jesus, you enter our house, take us by the hand, lift us up, and give us life again. Enter amongst us now in the Holy Spirit, that your people may be sanctified in these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took the bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them, saying this, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after, he took, and after supper, he took a cup. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant. It is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Ever-loving God, everyone is searching for you. We seek for you in solitude, and we long for you in company. We hope for you in distress, and we ache for you in the darkness. Meet us in our suffering and in our trials. Cast out the demons that beseech our public life and guard our personal struggles. Heal us when we are stricken and hopeless and raise us up when we are faint and weary. Hasten the day when every enemy becomes a friend to you. Every hunger is filled, every hunger is filled in you and every tears are comforted by you. And you are all in all, ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join now as Jesus' disciple asked him, how should we pray, Lord? And this is what he said. Our Father, who art in heaven, how shall be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thou wilt be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we do for those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the worst of evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Y'all, today we're going to leave the cups on the communion rail. We need to them. Please come to the Lord's table.
Do we get everybody? May you be strengthened to go out into our world this week and be God's hands and his feet. Please stand as you're able for our closing hymn, number 526, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, number 526. Thank you.